Hey, thanks for tuning in again. This is a follow-up video to the one I made in the springtime about my Team Associated Pro SE 10.6. So uh, if you hadn't seen those two videos, I would definitely go back and look at those first to see what this whole project was about. The reason why I call it a, point, a Pro SE 10.6 is because I swapped out just about every part I could suspension wise for SC 6.1 parts. So I ran it all season and uh, I thought now that the season is over, I'd come back and talk about the truck and how it performed and, and my overall thoughts about it. So uh, no wheels and tires on it right now because uh, I still haven't cleaned all those up yet after my last race, but for those of you that are curious, uh, here we allow carver type wheels on the front. So I run JC carvers on the front in green and almost everywhere Proline hole shots in M4 on the rear with uh, JC hazard wheels uh, on all four corners. The body is uh, J Concepts body finisher. Absolutely love these bodies. I ran Proline bodies last year and um the proline high flow or high tech flow tech flow tech yeah the proline flow tech is a nice body um but very uh it, it's a lightweight body and they don't take much abuse now that being said i don't abuse my bodies like i did my first year when i was learning how to drive so they would probably last a little bit better but if you want something that's kind of like low profile and uh yet durable then I highly recommend the J Concepts bodies. And if you want, you can get this one in lightweight as well. That being said, the Proline Axis is something I want to check out for sure. That is a badass looking body. And thanks to Jesse for turning me on to that one. So let's uh, let's get into it. Um, so again, as I said, as many of the parts that I could change to... 0.6 or SC 6.1 parts um, I did now so we're not going to go back and, and and relive that first video you can go back and watch those two videos the purpose of this video is to talk about the one major change that I did uh, to the truck after about the second after this after the first race with um, the best short course driver that we have and, and probably uh, and the best driver that we have and i hope he's not watching it because i don't want to i don't want to think that i uh am stroking his ego but i give credit where credit is due um there's a lot of good guys out there and thanks for all the help because i would be my progress would be slowed tremendously if it wasn't for all the help i got from the guys uh racing that i race with so um yeah you guys know who you are and and thanks again for for helping increase my knowledge of tuning it really uh it really meant a lot and certainly helped increase the performance of this truck so uh what am i going on about we made a major change in the back as i said i put as many sc 6.1 parts onto this truck as i could but one part that i put on here that was not an sc 6.1 part was the rear hubs now if you look at these you'll see they are uh sc 6.1 hubs but that's not where i started i started with b74 hubs and the reason why i started with b74 hubs was because the sc 6.2 and the t6.2 upgraded to b74 hubs so i thought i would give it a try on this truck not a good idea it changed the rear geometry too much from stock and I really had to chase those roll centers and it was getting silly. On the hub, if you're uh, not familiar with how a B74 hub is made, I will pull one out real quick here and show you. Here, actually, these are still assembled from when I took them off of my failed T5.6. So, the ball stud on the B74 hub goes onto this ball stud mount here on top of the hub. And then you can adjust your roll center by moving the ball stud on the hub up and down. You raise it and you raise your roll center. You lower it and you lower your roll center. Well, 
I ended up with a 12 millimeter ball stud screwed into the top of this hub with a stack of two millimeter thick ball stud washers on there to try and get my rear camber lengths into some sort of semblance of normality so that the truck would handle better. Got through the day and then when I got home, I swapped out those B74 hubs for the SC 6.1 or T6.1 hubs, which if you know anything about the stock Pro SC10, are very similar to the factory hubs included with the Pro SC10 car. The difference between the Pro SC10 factory hubs and the SC6.1 or T6.1 hubs is again adjustability. There's an insert in the bottom of the hub which allows you to move the hub up and down based on the traction level of the track by as much as three millimeters. The other advantage of going to hubs other than the factory hubs is that you have now the ability to move the hub within the rear suspension arm forward or back. I've got two millimeters of spacing in the back so it is pushed all the way forward two millimeters. What that does is it adds it shortens the wheelbase which adds a little bit of forward traction but it also helps the vehicle rotate and so if you're on a tight track like my personal track with uh, a lot of turns, um, mostly 180s, unfortunately. Uh, having that uh, shorter wheelbase along the rear to rotate helps uh, handling. So uh, those are not things that you get with the factory Pro SE 10 hubs. So that's why I changed those. And then, of course, the rear suspension arms, as I talked about in the other video, are also SC 6.1. And um, so, man, new truck. When I put these hubs on and was able to dial in the roll center and get this thing to handle correctly, it just, it got better every race. Another major thing that I discovered that I had been doing wrong in both of my trucks was, and hey, you know what? I'm still new. All right. I'm still new. I'm still learning. I was running the same weight shock oil front and back as I was running in my buggies. And, you know, <laughs> when I heard one of the guys at the track say, dude, it's not a buggy. It's got bigger wheels. It's got longer suspension arms. It's got bigger shocks. You can't expect it to function correctly with buggy weight oil. So um, I was running associated 27 and a half in the front and TLR 25 in the back. I think now I'd have to check my setup sheet. Now I'm running something like 32 and a half front and 30 rear TLR front and back and wow the truck stopped doing this going down the straight it was amazing so changing the hubs nailing the roll center using the appropriate weight shock oil the truck was always good guys truck was always good and what what is good good means that it was doing what I expected it to do it would go where I wanted it to go and it would stay there once it got there it handled really well this thing at the Blackfly track is so smooth. There's a quad in the back and I'll do a double and a double. And it's just like silky smooth. It's so good. Um, I won our major race there this year. And any other time I raced there with this truck, I won. And then when going up against the, uh, the other real good short course drivers in the province, my worst was uh, second. And... Going up against one guy and not getting lapped in some ways can be viewed as a, as a win. And at the last race of the year, after sorting out my suspension, I actually led a couple of laps. And it was a good time. This is, this is, I, it might be my favorite 10 scale class for real. And it's too bad that it's dying because I really enjoy it. And also, even though it's like one of my favorite classes, I don't take it too terribly seriously. So there's a lot of shit talk on the stand and good times and laughing and nothing is taken too seriously. And uh, and it's it's really a good time. We've got uh, a couple of new people in that class and I hope that they stay with it. I hope more people jump into two-wheel drive short course. I, 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 I don't know what to tell you. I, I love it. I love it. It's a lot of fun, especially on our tracks. This rear motor car, this rear motor truck rather just hooks up, right? It's... I had my SC 6.1 dialed last year, but it took me all season to get there because I'd go back and forth between that truck and this truck. And 
finally over the winter i committed to go back to this truck and stay with this truck and this truck only for short course and uh i reaped the benefits of not jumping around with different platforms and of course getting help from our more experienced drivers so um so that's it that's that's a quick and dirty little follow-up video um maybe real quick i'll go over the uh the setup i'm running oh yeah one thing to note so in another video i talked about the camber or the ball stud locations front and rear for my b5.6 well it's it's weird but on my pro sc10 i run them on the inside not the outside at every track except for my own because my track is is a small track with a lot of tight turns i find that the truck performs better with shorter camber lengths to become more responsive to get through all those little turns so those of you that know more than me are probably going uh yeah of course dummy but anyway so that's just an an, an observation i want to share with you i run long camber lengths everywhere except for my track which you know the the straight is still like 100 and 103 feet long but then everything else comes up really quick my track is uh mostly 10 foot lanes there's uh the hill turn that is nine foot lanes um but everything happens really fast and the track is is basically uh it's 100 by almost 40 in the front and about 25 in the back uh but the track is so small that it's forgiving the bad setups because everything happens so quick and there's not a lot of like flow you, you don't really know if your setup is a hot mess until you go to a bigger track. So, um, that being said, again, camber links, I shorten them up on my track. Um, okay, so then shocks. Uh, I run them, uh, my front shocks, I run in the middle on the tower and in the middle on the arm. Um, there's no bump steer washers on the rack or Ackerman washers. Uh, there's nothing, just ball studs, no washers whatsoever down on the steering knuckle or on the rack. In the back, my shocks, and this is, uh, I was I learned this this year, to get more side bite, to stop from losing the, the rear end in mid corner or on exit, uh, I'm running the shocks all the way in on the tower and all the way in on the arm. And man, doing that to this, doing that to all my two-wheel drive, 10 scale vehicles, I think even actually, yeah, my rear, my four wheel drive, my B74.1D, same thing, did that to the rear and it really improved the side bite. Um, the ball studs on the, uh, for the roll center on the hub are in the, uh, I've got the, you can have three holes across the top on that insert in the hub and two across the bottom. So I've got three across the top in the up position and I'm in the center hole. And then on the rear ball stud mount itself, I'm running 2.5 millimeters of ball stud washers for the uh, ball studs on the um, ball stud mount on the inside for the roll center. Also has a 78 Octolox slipper system, 78 tooth spur, and uh, this one I believe is a 22 tooth pinion. Um, gearing was a bit of a mess and I never ever bothered to get around to, to fixing it. And the reason why I say gearing was a mess is because man, I'd come off the track and that motor was hot, hotter than any other of my vehicles. And I'm running the, um, aluminum D block in the back with the B5 arrow inserts and the inserts are pointed inboard towards the middle. And, um, and then I would be running a plastic c block in the front that is a uh, three plus two so three degrees of toe plus two degrees of any squat but these sc 6.1 arms have some sweep in them so it's probably getting me to four ish degrees of of toe so so um again same rationale as my rear motor b5 if you're running on old school dirt tracks with untreated surfaces and rear motor cars just happen to handle better and you want to um improve your short course game your two-wheel drive short course game the truck is still available they changed the name come up with a new version i don't see any difference whatsoever in uh in that truck but it's got a new paint scheme in the body so it's it's a viable two-wheel drive short course option especially since the majority of the suspension components from the sc 6.1 fit i mean same thing i did with my b5 
B6 caster blocks, B6 front axle carriers. Uh, these are <clears throat> SC 6.1 front axles, SC 6.1 front flat arms, ST 6.1 rear arms, SC 6.1 hubs. <clears throat> the all the camera links and the ball cups and the ball studs all SC 6.1. And uh, I upgraded the steering uh, to aluminum and the ball stud mount to aluminum in the back. So hobby wing motor. So, uh, yeah, probably one of my favorite RCs to drive and race with, guys. If you have any questions, post them down below. And uh, I hope you followed the video series on this truck. And it was well, well worth it. And I'm looking forward to getting it back out into uh, on the dirt tracks for next year. Take care, everybody.